hey, hey, and welcome back to the Trady Business School podcast, the podcast where we have real conversations and share insights and tips on how you can run your trades or contracting business more enjoyably, simply, and profitably. Today, I'm going to have a chat about a topic called Words Sabotage Your Success. And this has come about from a number of client sessions that I've been having recently where I'm noticing a lot of language, a lot of words that people are using that ultimately are sabotaging the success, uh, their results, and they're altering the experience that they are having. So I'll ask you this. Have you ever wondered why you lost a quote? Have you ever wondered why someone didn't take the job you offered them? Perhaps they chose to work for somebody else over you. Have you ever wondered why nobody listened to a great idea that you have had or a recommendation? Here's the thing. The words that we use or the language we use is critical. Using the wrong words will ultimately harm your self-image, harm your sales, harm your credibility and authority, and harm your business results. That's the end point. Yeah, we could take this further and look at how uh, how we are presenting in our worlds outside our business as well. We harm our relationships that we have with our loved ones, with our family, with our children, our friends. So if you would like to project confidence, competence, professionalism, and self-assurance, then listen on this episode is for you. So often people minimize themselves by using language without realizing, uh, language that is damaging or undoes the result that they want. It's kind of like they're digging a hole for themselves without realizing. This language that is used communicates a lot about a person's inner world and it will ultimately affect the result they get in life and business. There are some really common words that we all use, myself included. You know, I make sure that I always stay on top and listen to and I'm aware of the language that I use, the words that I use, especially the frequent ones. So I'm going to cover off four, four common minimizing words or statements that I have noticed a lot. And I recommend that you all, as you're listening, focus on eliminating today. So the first one is just. I just want to. The word just. Think about this. I just like to follow up. I just want to mention. I just want to tell you. Can you hear and see how the use of the word just dilutes the impact of each of these statements? Think about this. Compare. I just want to mention that I have the right experience for this job with. I want you to know that I have the right experience for the job. Which sounds more powerful? Who would you give the job to? The second one, right? I want you to know that I have the right experience for this job. There's an ownership, a power, a conviction, a presence, a certainty in the language, which conveys a lot about the person speaking those words. The word just is what I call a qualifier minimizes what follows it makes smaller it dilutes what follows it I'm just a plumber I'm just a tradie I've heard this so often it minimizes you so yeah just just there we go you know just 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 saying the word enough it's such a frequently used word Focus on eliminating using that word. Notice if you're using it a lot. It minimizes and it minimizes what follows and it conveys a lack of confidence. So you're you're presenting yourself as smaller. The second one I'll talk through is try. I'll try. I'll try to. I'll try to work on uh, my 90-day plan this this week. I'll try to do X, Y, and Z. Yeah, I'll try to um, insert new habit here. No, Yoda did say it best, uh, do or do not, there is no try. No, the thing about the word try is it's a fence-sitting comment. A lot of people say, oh, well, I might or I might not. Really what it do- is doing is 
elegantly giving you the excuse, the illusion or delusion that you're going to do this thing. But really what you're doing is saying, I'm going to kind of give it a go, but I'm already giving myself an out. I'm just going to try, which is effectively saying, no, I'm really not going to do this thing because you've, it's like your, your subconscious is pre-writing excuses, pre-writing or predicting the outcome that it's not going to happen, the thing that you're going to try and do and making it okay making it okay to not do the thing. I'm going to try and get up to go to the gym tomorrow at 6 a.m. I'm going to try and eliminate the word just. I'm going to try and be more focused on uh, the task I need to do today. You're either going to do it or you're not going to do it. And try is elegant excuse making. It's giving yourself an out. So say I will do this or I won't do this. And it will be very interesting because the saying that you won't do it, admitting to that to yourself may be enough from what you need. So, well, I'm going to do it or not. I'm, I'm going to do it at this time. Get way more specific. But look at eliminating, uh, look at doing it, uh, eliminating the word try. The third, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Who has heard somebody that says sorry all the time? You know, they walk through the door. Oh, sorry, they bump at somebody. They step in front of somebody on the street, not even intentionally. It it was a natural occurrence. People were walking in the same direction. Sorry. Uh, The people that will often just subconsciously, automatically, reflexively say the word I'm sorry all the time. Now, this doesn't mean you should never apologize. It's perfectly appropriate to apologize. In fact, it's a must have. Apologize when you've made a mistake or miscalculated something. Maybe you've you've not really thought about it. You've acted thoughtlessly in that moment. Maybe you unintentionally caused unhappiness or harm, whatever there is. If there's an experience of remorse, a feeling of, well, I didn't mean to do that. I, I want to apologize and definitely apologize. However, it's the reflexive I'm sorry's that you're saying for things that were even not even your fault and outside your control, you're apologizing. The problem that we have when we apologize too often and reflexively, anytime anything unpleasant happens, it's it's almost like you're taking ownership of something and you're almost apologizing. It's like you're apologizing for your existence. I'm not going to say almost, that's, that's minimizing what I'm saying. You're apologizing for your existence. So look for the reflexive sorries, pick yourself up on it, apologize when you mean it, own the apology and stop using the reflexive sorries because it's minimizing and uh, minimizing your, your power, your personal power. Number four, the last one I'll share today, and there are so many more than four, I chose four to share with you, the ones I notice a lot. And number four is a little bit, a little bit. It's like just in that it's a qualifier. It's probably got a little bit more or a little bit more. It has more of an effect. It is more of a qualifier than just. And I mean, so I'm a little bit concerned that we won't make our revenue target this quarter. You're either concerned or you're not. It's kind of hedging a little bit. I'm a little bit concerned. Own the concern. You're concerned about it. Own, uh, Own whatever it is. I'm a little bit worried. I'm a little bit concerned. I'm a little bit unhappy. You're unhappy. You're concerned. You're worried. Whatever it is, own that and don't minimize your feeling or what what your experience is by saying a little bit before it. Own it. So those are the four language patterns that I wanted to talk to you about today as business owners, as managing teams, as talking with customers, as looking at your sales and looking at developing your businesses, whatever it may be, removing these language patterns from your everyday language will have you step into more personal power, more confidence, more conviction, more certainty, and the world that and the results that you get will be reflected back accordingly. I was speaking with a client Last week, here's the example. I noticed when he introduced himself and in in the information he shared, he used the word just a lot, a lot. It was almost in every sentence. And there was it was minimizing everything. So we had a chat about this, raised it to his awareness. He was very grateful. He took 
and happily accepted the challenge of the ban on using it for the week. We talked about having other people remind him of when he used the word just, because often our subconscious is doing it and we don't realise. It can be very hard to change uh, and stop using something when we don't realise that we are saying it. So employ people around you in your friendship circle, somebody that you're close to and say, hey, could you please let me know when I use the word? So it may be just that you beep at them or they tap you on the shoulder or they go, ah, like there's something like that every time you use the word until you, until you are consciously aware of using the word all of the time. And then once you're consciously aware of it, you can then work on stopping and resetting. And you'll clunk through this a little bit when things are that automatic you think about the person that you know that says um all the time as a sentence filler in when they're talking they're often not aware that they've said it so it requires other people to remind them when they're saying it so that they're aware all the time of saying it before they can stop saying it so for each of these statements if you think wow that's me I say these things a lot I recognize I say them a lot, but I know I'm not fully aware of all of the times, then ask somebody to help you. However, take action and look at uh, and, and with certainty step into removing these from your language. So eliminate the weak words is the first thing I would say. Replace them with stronger words. Stronger words, so you can eliminate them and then you can replace them. Not always, but you can replace them with stronger words such as I believe, I'm confident that, I expect that, I know that those sorts of words. Replace them with stronger words or be very clear in the statement. The last thing I'll say is own it. Own it. Own your existence. Own your viewpoint. Own your commitment. Own your ideas. Own your credibility. Own your power. Own it. And eliminate these words today and own the space that you live in in this world that you occupy in this world and the gifts that you have and step into that. The results that you will experience from this, in one week, this client that eliminated the word just and worked hard on it, he came, I noticed a remarkable shift and change in the energy of how he showed up. He sounded and looked more confident. And when I asked him, how has your week been? What have you noticed have shifted? And we we put numbers to it and he shifted from something like a three out of 10 to a eight out of 10 and feeling of confidence. Now he was about to go out there and start having some sales conversations to attract some new clients into his business. And he realized the importance of eliminating the word just from his language and he, because he realized how important it would be and the impact it would have on those sales conversations if he turned up with that feeling, that lack of confidence that he was unintentionally portraying or sharing or exuding uh, from uh, when he was in those conversations. So huge, huge shift uh, will make a huge shift in your world. I would love to know what your words are. So drop a message somewhere around wherever you're listening to this. Have a share. Uh, Thank you for joining me today on this episode of Tradey Business School. Not strictly around trades content today, more of a human behavior thing, totally relevant to everybody with a heartbeat to look at the language they're using. However, I do know the powerful results that it will have in your business if you look at your language. Super important. If you've really enjoyed this episode and you know somebody that will benefit from it, then share it, like it, love it. Uh, And until next week, thank you so much for joining me. I'm forever grateful for your ear, for your time and for you tuning into these episodes. And uh, until next week, bye for now. 